Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ternary search to find if a number exists in an array or not. In the previous video, I already explained binary search, so if you want to check it out, I'll link it in the description below. The precondition to ternary search is that the array must already be sorted from least to greatest. Now, let's try to find number 10. The first step is to put the left at the beginning of the array and R at the end of the array. We need to calculate two mids. So the first mid is L plus R minus L divided by 3. That's just a formula. So L is 0, R is at index 7, and L is at 0 again. So you get 7 divided by 3, which gives you 2.3. And this sign means you round down to 2. So M1 is at index 2. And here is the formula to find the second mid. And R is 7, R is also at 7, and L is at 0. So you get 7 divided by 3 again, and that's 2.3 rounded down, which gives you 2, and then M2 is at index 5. We split the array into 3 groups, and since we're trying to find 10, and 10 is smaller than 30, then 10 must be in the first group. So we simply move R over to the first group, like this. And then we repeat this process. We find M1 and M2, which are at 0 and 1, here we found 10 at M1. So since we found 10, we can return true or return 0, which is the index of 10. Let's try to find number 45. We look at M1, that's not 45. We look at this, that's 60, which is not 45. But then we notice that 45 is between 30 and 60. So it has to be in the second group. We move L to the second group and R to the second group. And then we repeat this process. So we calculate M1 and M2, which are at 3 and 4. We look at M1 and M2 again, so that's not 45. This is also not 45, but 45 is between 40 and 50. So we move L over here, and then move R over here. Now, when R is to the left of L, this indicates that 45 does not exist inside the array, so you either return false or minus 1. Let's try to find number 70. We already have M1 and M2, so we look at their contents. So this is not 70, that's not 70. But since 70 is larger than 60, it must be in the third group. So we simply move L to the third group. And we repeat the process. We calculate M1 and M2, and they are at 6 and 7. And there you go, we found 70 at M1 in the array, and we can return true or return 6. Let's take a look at the Python code. So we put L at index 0 and R at the end of the array. Then as long as L is less than or equal to R, we calculate the mid1 and mid2 indexes. Then we look into the array content at M1 and M2. If we find our target, we just return the index, which means that we found it. If our target is smaller than the number at M1, then it's in the first group, we have to move R to the first group and we repeat the process. If it's in the third group, we move L to the third group and we repeat the process. But if it's in the second group, then we move L and R to their places accordingly. And after the while loop, R is to the left of L, so we return minus 1. Here are the test cases. And this is the ternary search recursive function, but it basically does the same thing. The best case is when you find the target at M1 and M2 right away, so it's immediate and it's all of one. For the worst and average cases, every time you iterate through the loop, you choose one group, right? So you basically get rid of two thirds of the array. For example, you have an array with 27 numbers. The second iteration, you get nine and then three and then one, right? So that is log base three of n. So that's why the average and worst cases are all of log n. And ternary search does not create extra space, so the space complexity is all of one. And that's basically it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and share. It means a lot.